scale level data can be examined in multiple ways, including doing comparisons between categories of a categorical variable. We are going to dive deeper into exploring and summarizing scale level data with SPSS. Go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. In the Dependent List box, we could examine age and years at current address, each by themselves. Click OK. Here we see all of those descriptive statistics that we are becoming familiar with. We get the mean and the 5% trimmed mean. The 5% trimmed mean is when the top and bottom 2.5% of the cases are trimmed off, and the remaining 95% of the scores are used to compute the mean. This removes outliers and brings the mean back to where it would have been without the outliers. Scroll down and you will see some charts and plots. This is a stem and leaf plot. It is like a histogram in that you can still see the shape of the data. Notice how the age in years is normally distributed. But you also keep the actual scores. For instance, this 1 and 8 tells me that this person is 18 years old. There are four 19-year-olds. The five zeros show me that there are five 20-year-olds. The oldest person is 77. Now these counts are not exactly accurate. See here in the note that each leaf is 10 cases. That means that in our data set of 6,400 people, there are actually 10 18-year-olds and around 40 19-year-olds. Lots of people in this data set. Scroll down some more and we see a box plot. This is a normally distributed box plot. Keep scrolling and you'll see what I mean. For the years at current address, we see the shape of the data in the stem and leaf plot and we see its skew. We also see the actual scores. So the longest time at a residence is 38 years and three people have that score. Except that's not really the longest time. We actually have several outliers or extreme scores that are greater than 39 years. The skew of the data is also represented in this box plot. The scores are all packed in the lower numbers, and the sparse upper numbers are identified as circles, indicating that they are outliers. The numbers next to each circle are the case numbers. You could go back to your data set and find case 1998. That would be someone who lived at an address for a very long time. Scroll back to the top of the descriptives, and you can see that the 5% trimmed mean does not change very much for the normally distributed variable, but that it varies by almost a full point with the skewed data. Okay, so this is good, but the real power of the explore command is in the ability to split a scale variable by groups of a categorical variable. So for example, we could split these two scale variables by gender and then compare the scores between males and females. Go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Explore. In the dependent list box, we already have age and years at current address. Move gender into the factor list. Now, while we are at it, let's look at some of our other options. Under statistics, we have a way to test for outliers. Let's do that. Continue. Under plots, we could also get a histogram and we can do a test for whether the scores are normally distributed. 
This test will tell us something similar to the PP plot, only with numbers. Continue and OK. Now we see each variable displayed for each gender. So here are the scores for women, and here are the age scores for men. Same with years at current address. The descriptives have also been split with the female scores on top and the male scores below. The Extreme Values box identifies the five highest and lowest scores in the distribution. When you see the A superscript and B superscript, that indicates that you have more than five of those scores. Remember that there were a lot of 18-year-olds. Now we get to the tests of normality. There are two popular tests. The Kolmogorov-Smirnov test, which is my favorite just because of the name, and the Shapiro-Wilk test, which is what I typically use in reporting. Both of these tests compare the distribution to a normal distribution, and significance values less than 0.05 indicate that the distribution is different from normality or non-normal. Now, the first thing that might surprise you is that both of these distributions are non-normal, according to these tests. And that's because both of these tests are hypothesis tests, and they are a function of sample size. Any distribution of 6,400 people is going to differ from normality. Which brings me to a second point. Do not interpret these tests as P less than 0.05, even with relatively small sample sizes. You should use P less than 0.01 for reasonably sized data sets, and P less than 0.001 for larger data sets. Certainly with more than 1,000, this is a large data set. So neither of these tests is particularly useful for a data set as large as this one is. Scroll down to see the histogram. Male and female ages are similarly distributed. The stem and leaf plots look similar to the one for the entire distribution. Here is a QQ plot, or quartile quartile plot. This is interpreted in the same way as the PP plot. If the data are normally distributed, they will fit on the 45 degree line. For age, we see that the middle of the distribution is normally distributed, and the diversions from normality occur at the extreme ends. The box plots are side by side for this example. That allows us to more easily compare them. Now here we see one outlier, case number 1998. Hey, that was the same case number as the outlier who lives at his residence for the longest time. The picture is becoming clearer. The remaining output concerns the variable years at current address. We see both histograms with their positive skew. We see both stem and leaf plots. The QQ plots are off of the 45 degree line all along its length. This is one messed up distribution. And finally, we see the side-by-side -side box plots with all of the outliers. And there again is case 1998. What you should take away from this discussion is that when you collect data, you should spend some time getting acquainted with it before you begin analyzing it. From this brief introduction, you are already beginning to discover the character of these two variables. If you're doing a thesis or a dissertation, you should be intimately familiar with your data and understand if there are outliers or other idiosyncrasies. If you are exploring scale level data, you should examine the mean, median, and standard deviation at the least. You should use either frequencies, descriptives, or the explore commands. Frequencies gives you the greatest amount of control over which analysis you want to see. Descriptives is a fast and easy way to see the most important descriptive statistics for a scale variable. Explore gives you a variety of graphs to visualize your data and allows you to subdivide the analyses by categories. If you are exploring scale-level data, you should examine them with a histogram 
and a normal curve. Check normality with a PP plot. You can also use the graphs generated by the frequencies or explore commands and use the chart builder for a display ready graphs. Regardless of what type of scale data you have, you should explore your data before using it. And you should strive to display your data honestly so that we can all learn something from them. Thank <laughs> you.